Good afternoon. Today is Sunday, May 17th, 2020, and it's just before 4 p.m. Uh, here in California, in Pasadena. So here's the update for the last week. Uh, we're going to talk about starting up the PR campaign uh, on Wednesday night's um, team meeting, team, team Zoom video conference call. Um, Jeff Hazlett and the Hero Club have a public relations agency, and he's already said that he's willing to put together deals for payment later. So I want to talk about um, putting together a public relations campaign now to uh, market the opportunity that we have in terms of raising funds for distressed and sports leagues, you know, everything that's going on with COVID-19. Um, I think there's a good case to begin that now. And then, uh, you know, of course, continue that story uh, when we have our first um, deal in hand and then subsequent deals. So uh, I do think it's smart. My, my position is to go ahead and get started now, um, but we're going to talk out all sides of that uh, on the on the conference call on Wednesday night. And if, uh, if the decision is made to move ahead, then I will get with Jeff's team uh, very quickly to start on that. Um, physically settled crypto contracts. This is just all part of this up is down, down is up, left is right, right is left. Um, there is no such thing. I, another, another batch of these things have come out and, and talking about it being physically settled, which is just utter nonsense. I mean, it doesn't even, it doesn't even, uh, pass the initial sniff test of believability. I mean, if where, where is a physical crypto? Where, where can I put my hands? On, on, a, on a group of alphanumeric digits in cyberspace. It's just utter nonsense. Um, NFL is already talking about delaying their season start for the fall. Uh, pay attention to that. Uh, you know, they just announced the schedule and then they've already announced pushing the schedule. $738 billion deficit in April 2020 alone. That's a federal, federal budget deficit. That's basically a year's worth of budget deficit in a month. Uh, and it's only going to be worse uh, for for May and June. Um, you know, it's it's a mess. Uh, deflation is is becoming an issue. Prices are actually dropping. The CPI is down. That's not something you want because it tends to uh, suppress spending even further because uh, people sit on the money and and they you know they think the price is going to go down further. It's a it's a death spiral kind of situation and. The fact that that's happening, the CPI is going down, even with all of this government stimulus, which is essentially printing printing money and borrowing money, uh, both. They, they do both. Um, it, that's a problem. So they're going to want to try to arrest that. It's, it's actually worse to have deflation than it is to have inflation. Um, I'm looking at shipping out the pending... Uh, sport shares orders that were uh, completed before the store was taken down. They go back to February, uh, right before all this uh, started. So uh, I'm going to look and see about getting those out this month. I think I can do that. I'll bring them over in a couple of batches. So if you're expecting that, I'll be sending out a separate message uh, in, a, in another email when I'm sure of that uh, and, and when you can expect those shipments that have been delayed now, I guess, about three months. So uh, the XFL, so we're, uh, we have multiple serious conversations going on there. Uh, I have some contacts that have accepted uh, my invitation request on LinkedIn. We actually are now looking at um, signing an NDA and getting into further conversation there. There is a deadline uh, in June for uh, in the bankruptcy court. So, uh, you know, there's now an actual time stamp on where we need to be in getting something in their hands, but it's very active conversation going on there. Uh, we've been talking about that by email all across the weekend. So um, this is looking promising. It, you know, granted it's a it's a moonshot, but given the fact that they tangled up with gambling in the beginning, it was one of their main uh, features. Uh, obviously, didn't save them from destruction. Uh, I think the compare contrast story that would come out of XFL being uh, reconstituted. Uh, using sports investing instead of sports gambling would be the absolute uh, best possible situation of all of the the deals that we're uh, looking at and have sent proposals out on. This would be the best one. Uh, Zoom, attention economy on steroids. So 
Um, I'm, you know, I think it's getting overdone. Too many Zoom meetings, uh, not not qualifying whether it's really necessary. Uh, you know, people are used to doing business by email and all of that, and I think it's it's an overreaction. Um, so you're getting a lot of burnout. I know I'm feeling it. Too many invitations, turning down almost all of them now because it's just it's it's being overdone. And and I think that what's happening there is it's an extension of the attention economy concept. So everybody's trying to get attention via creating their own Zoom, Zoom uh, video chats, and and that's what's happening there. It, it's going to hit a limit. And, and come back from that because it's just really it's too much. Um, MLB fighting over money. So, you know, talking about trying to get a crazy crippled up kind of schedule going uh, in early July, I really, really don't see how they're going to do that, especially with testing protocols and all that stuff. And then there's fighting between the between the players and the, and the owners over um, not just this situation, but longstanding things that are kind of being pushed to the fore. So, I'm even less confident you're going to see baseball in the summertime. I just don't, mainly because of the testing protocols, the lack of the ability to ensure the safety of the players. It's not so much playing games in a particular stadium with no fans that can be worked out, but to get all that other stuff arranged and travel and all that stuff arranged in the next, uh, you know, 60 days, less than 60 days, is just not realistic. Uh, not to mention being able to, get your broadcasting and all that figured out. So I think they're, they're, they're dreaming there. Twitter, uh, work from home forever. Uh, first one, uh, at least first one in the public consciousness, that's a big deal because it's going to act as a flagship, um, you know, and all of the attendant things that are going to come from, from, from that. I mean, you know, uh, er, er, companies start taking this on as a policy. Uh, it's back to the whole thing of, of large capacity buildings not being necessary and uh, commutes not being necessary and being able to live, you know, in a farm in the middle of Oklahoma, you know, rather than having to live in downtown Los Angeles. I mean, you're going to have a lot of, the, it starts to break down the case for big cities. So that's what I see anyway. Um, Richard Branson, Virgin, Virgin Group, having a hard time. Uh, this is the only point I want to make of this is this is just the scope, the size and scope of the problem, um, having to liquidate things, uh, even maybe Necker Island, there's just big cash crunch all the way around. So even a super talented guy like that, that's built an empire over many decades is really having a hard time right now. Uh, I'm getting a lot of unsolicited LinkedIn requests from uh, very high level people in sports and all different categories are coming from all over the place. I get them every day. Um, some of them are VCs, which is interesting, uh, unsolicited requests, and even some government ministers, uh, people that are in charge of cultural things and sports related things in countries around the world. I'm getting connect requests from them. So this is all new and it's not a result of any farming or any outreach that I'm doing. It's just coming to coming to my door. So that's really good to see. Um, the market is coming to us day by day. Um, just every day, the point there is every day that clicks off without having live sports and, and, and not having, you know, everything being killed off right now. Uh, the demand, the, the potential for us to expose what we have and, and, and make a new story out of it and, and really bring everything to fruition grows by the day because the pain is growing by the day. I think it's finally getting through bit by bit, not very fast but it's getting through that this is not a, a sprint. You know, this is a marathon situation and uh, there, something is going to have to be done to, to fill these gaps, to keep the fans from fleeing to other things. I mean, there's a real threat of them just losing interest, you know, and then recapturing that interest is, is hard once you, you've lost it. So uh, that's that. Uh, talk of negative rates again. Yeah, look. A Main Street USA is not going to understand if I put a dollar in the bank, a hundred dollars in the bank, a year from now I'm going to have less than a hundred dollars. That might work in other places because they're used to all kinds of crazy things happening with interest rates and, and hyperinflation and all kinds of things that really the American psyche is not familiar with. But the idea of putting money in the bank and walking away with less money in a year 
it's just not going to fly. And the Fed chair knows this, so uh, it's just not going to work. So that I don't, I don't, that's not a realistic option for the dollar. Um, I'm not saying it won't happen, but if it happens, you're going to see some really awful things happen in the economy. Um, Supreme Court doing cases by phone. This is just in the breaking down of all of these pillars and, and like, I would call it, you know, accepted, uh, this is the way it's done. It, not only this is the way it's done, but the perception of it, right? The It's like your favorite TV show host doing his, uh, doing his TV show from his basement instead of a well-lit studio with a studio audience and clapping and all this rapper. So it's, it's basically taking all that off of everything, piece by piece. Every part of society is having these special, they really were never special. Here's the thing. They really never were special. It's all been a construct in the first place. You know, the Supreme Court justices are human beings just like you and I. The actors and actresses and people you watch on TV are just the same. I know a number of them. They are just the same. They're human beings. The Supreme Court is in this big fancy building that's been there forever with giant columns and it's all this ominous granite block. That kind of all gets called into question when you've got guys flushing toilets, you know, <laughs> that's one of the things that happened in Supreme Court. You hear a toilet flushing, you, you know, justices are calling in. They're not wearing their robes. Why? You're on the phone. I seriously doubt those that they're wearing their robes robes while sitting at, at their home office talking on the phone. I mean, it's just all these things, these conventions and all that are just being decimated across the board. <laughs> it's a great leveling of, of, of everything but the economy. OK, that's when I say leveling, I mean leveling of perceptions of all these things, but definitely inequalities are, are worse now than they've ever been. It's, it's exacerbating that, that problem. But that's a whole nother conversation. Um, 40%, now listen to this one, 40% of households under 40,000 income lost a job in the last uh, two, three months. That's from the Guardian. That's, um, I said that half the jobs disappeared Okay. I'm on record from back in March or early April, I think late March, um, that the economy was cut in half. This is really close to that. <laughs> um, and that, uh, oh, and, and further that half of those half jobs that were lost are never going to return. So you're going to see that story as well. I haven't seen that exactly said yet, but it's going to be. Um, ESPN puffing away on sports gambling, uh, positive spin stories. Look, either we have laws or we don't have laws. And I've said this for a lot of years now. We're going to have to decide in the very near future whether we're a country of laws or a country of men. The difference is, is that we were, well, the, the difference should be obvious. Are we, are we subject to men or are we subject to rule of law? If we're not subject to rule of law, the republic is finished, okay? The Republic is not going to survive that. They never have, they never will, and the United States is no different. So either we have laws or we don't have laws. The reality is, is that about two-thirds of the states do not have enabling legislation for sports gambling. The only thing, the only thing that PASPA did was turn the decision over to the states, okay? But there's a boogaboo there that is still there, which is the Wire Act. So you have a 100% prohibition that's a positive pr prohibition. That means don't do it, okay, from the Wire Act. And then you have approximately two-thirds of the states that still do not have any enabling legislation. So to go out and claim that it's legal and everything is fine is a flat 100%, 100 lie, okay? It is not the case. And even in the enabling states, there are all kinds of rules, some have mobile, some, most of them don't, then this whole geofencing thing and some, it's working, it's not where, it's a convoluted mess, but to go out and say categorically that it's legal is a flat out lie. It's no, absolutely no way to come up with that result. None, zero. So sports bets. So they're still pimping. You've got DraftKings talking about what people gambling on table tennis. I mean, out front here, you know, 
sometimes uh, our, our roommates here play badminton. So you know, maybe they should take some action on the badminton. I don't see any sports bets. Where, where are these sports bets? Where, where is it happening? So you're out there pimping something that is not even alive. Okay, it's not even alive. And making up for it with video games and casinos, that's not the same thing. It's not that the point is is that all the major sports are stopped. Therefore, all the major all the gambling on those major sports is stopped. And yet they're still out there pimping it like it's alive and it's going to be the greatest thing and it's legal. No, it's not. Okay. This economy, not only in this country, but in the world, is being utterly devastated by this, this, this disease. And if you think people are going to take what little bit of money that they have and piss it away on that, they're not going to do it. They're not going to have the cash, they're not going to have the credit, and they're not going to have the will to do it. What they are going to spend money on is a Disney subscription at $7.99 a month, a Netflix subscription at $10 a month, because that's all they're going to be able to afford, okay? And if some guy is gambling away the rent money on his, uh, uh, as soon as his wife finds out, that game over, okay, buddy? You're going to be out on the street. So what you're left with is addicts who are going to blow the last little bit of money. But the public is, when they, they're going to be so far separated from it because of this delay. And as the time goes on, it's only going to erode their finances further. Where's that money going to come from? I mean, you look at Macau. This is the greatest example of how this is not going to turn back into what it was. Macau reopened, and 90% of the people still don't show up. So it's, it's all bullshit, plain and simple. Um, Elon selling all of his stuff. That's really happening. Now, why am I bringing that up? Because the whole idea of him and people, this is not universally true, but it is true for Elon because my friend works for him directly. It's never been about that, okay? It's a lot like movie stars that buy these big mansions here. Some of them like it, but most of them, it's part of the marketing package. It's part of the be a movie star, get your, you need the coverage. You need the media to talk about you all the time, talk about your house, talk about your car. That's how you increase your Q score, whatever they call it, so that they can charge more, okay? So that they can pay those mortgage. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a treadmill, okay? So you have to be visible so that people will go to your movies and then, oh, he's a movie star, he's got to be rich. And then so they get a big house and then they have to pay $20,000 mortgage, which requires that they get another, a big, another big movie or they lose the house. I mean, it's just, that's what it is, okay? I've lived here five years. That's how it is. That's the whole game hate to break it to you, but that's what really happens. Uh, and in the case of Elon, he didn't, some of that is just, <laughs> it's pressure from society thinking that's what you're supposed to do when you're a rich guy. Okay. He doesn't care about that stuff. He cares about the mission. The mission is give people and give humanity an option in case we screw earth up, irre irretrievably screw earth up and, and we lose our home basically and the human species goes extinct. So if it doesn't serve that purpose and I'm guessing that his girlfriend got this through to him, that it's all just a big bunch of overhead and nonsense. Um, the point is, and it is, it totally is, uh, the point is, is this is going to affect the other rich guys, okay? Because he's sort of Mr. Wizard rich guy, right? And if he starts ditching all this stuff, it kind of puts a question mark in everybody else's head. Like it, it may, it devalues those things. Okay. It, it, it de he's not doing it because he needs the money. He doesn't care whether he makes money or loses money on those sales. Just get it out of my life. Put all, I think it's seven of them, all seven of his LA uh, properties here up for sale. So that's going to, that's another one of these things that's happening in our society now that's going to have an earthquake kind of a shock because it, it's, it's devaluing those things that we've been selling everybody for so long or what you want to be and what you want to have. And this is who you want to be. And, you know, you want people to talk about your seven mansions. And he doesn't care a lick about that. He never did. Maybe in the very beginning, but for a very long time, not. Uh, casino stocks are down hard. Uh, should be that way. Uh, I'm tracking the, uh, the, the stories on, on Vegas very closely. 
come on. I mean, you really, and the strip clubs and all that, you really think that people are going to go to Las Vegas, sit six feet apart and wear a mask uh, so they can play a slot machine or sit at a craps table? You can't crowd in. You can't have people. I mean, that's the whole fun of Vegas is, is the crowds and the standing around a craps table with 50 people and no go Joe win. You know, that's all being taken away. The whole ethos of it is being wrecked. So it's, it's like, I, I watch, watch what happens when they, when they pull everything, when they pull the locks off of everything, it's, the crowds are not going to get, they're not going to be able to afford the airline tickets. Okay. The airline tickets are going to have to go up by about twice because the capacity is going to go down. It's just a math problem. We're going to lose a bunch of airlines. That's, that's clear. That's going to happen. So it's going to cost more to get there. It's going to cost more to stay there because the casinos are going to have to make up for that wasted floor space. How are they going to do that? They're going to charge the customer somehow. The whole math problem behind all of it just falls apart. And then the whole ethos is messed up. Go to Sin City while wearing a surgical mask? I mean, it's it's nonsensical. So DraftKings put out their Friday uh, uh, quarterly report for Q2, or I'm sorry, Q1 uh, 2020. Look, Q1 is not where COVID-19 hit. It was realized that COVID-19 was a real thing at like the second or third week of March. So that's the very tail end of, of Q1. So the full impact of what has happened to their business has not been realized yet. The Q2 2020 numbers and forward are going to tell the story. And to say that it's not going to have any impact going forward, lie. That is a ball-faced, it is affecting every casino stock. It is affecting, and these people run online casinos and offline casinos and games and resorts. All of that industry all of the numbers just go to, if you don't believe me, look at Sheldon Adelson's comments, okay? He's been in the gambling business longer than anybody. And look at what he says about what's going to happen to that. So that's a complete bunch of nonsense. They've lost hundreds of millions of dollars since they've started that I can point to. I can show you public reporting on that. They have lost hundreds. They've literally lost money from the first day. Hundreds of millions of dollars. And this current report, they're, they're, this is only Q1, okay? Remember, this does not reflect what happened since this COVID-19 hit. Q1, night, they, they upticked in gross by 30%. That's true in Q1, but their rate of loss increased. As I've said before, every time they take in more in, income, not only do they lose more, but they lose it at a faster rate, okay? So their most recent numbers are they lost seven about 70 cents for every 90 cents they took in. How in the world is that a good math problem? They lost almost 70 cents on, <laughs> on edge. I mean, that's seven ninths of the money. Now, the fact that you can hype it up and you can get the talking heads talking about it, all you're doing is suckering in Joe Q Main Street. This is this is the stock market game, okay? This is the news-driven stock market game. So those people don't know. They don't, they don't know how to dig into the financials. They don't understand any of that stuff. So they just hear it on the news and they go buy it, okay? That could continue to happen. I'm not saying that that doesn't, and it might. It's, it's hard to say. This market is very disconnected from reality, extremely, extraordinarily disconnected from reality. But look, at the end of the day, back to the laws, if, the, if there is no enforcement of the Wire Act, and frankly, two-thirds of the country, it's also illegal, and I already have seen stories where they're not, they're not following these rules. If they get attacked, okay, on that basis, this can all come unraveled like overnight. They went public through this reverse merger because they needed to put some cash in the bank because they were out, okay? Look at the story. Even, even the CEO says that. They were dangerously close to running out of money. So what they did is they bought some more time. At this current rate, one year. If they don't raise any more money, they've got one year to live before they're gone. Go back to this video a year from now. And they may raise more money. There's a lot of people double down, double down, because that's human nature. You know, just keep justifying, keep justifying, keep justifying. At some point, they're going to cut the cord. But they may go another round or two. 
but they're not making any money. <laughs> they never have made any money and there's no path to making any money. This is not an Amazon story, okay? I understood Amazon's path even when they were losing money. I knew what they were doing. They were grabbing eyeballs and market share and they were building a channel. But these guys, every time they expand the channel, the losses grow and the rate of the losses grow. And they're not selling anything. They're not delivering a tangible good to anybody. There's a lot of stuff Amazon had to absorb in building up that infrastructure to trucks and warehouses and all of that stuff. That's what caused a lot of their losses. But it wasn't, it wasn't sell 10 books and lose more when you get to 100 books, lose even more per book than you, <laughs> than you were losing when you, made, when you sold 100 books. Sell 1,000 books, lose even more per book. Sell 10,000 books, lose even more per book. That's what's happening there. Just look at the numbers. It's as clear as a bell. So the bellwethers for the gambling, I would say worldwide, okay? Worldwide, the bellwethers to watch for the future is Vegas on the ground, okay? So what happens in Vegas on the ground is telling the story about land-based casinos and sports books and all of that. And DraftKings has become the online flagship for what happens in that space. In both cases, right now, in both cases, they're both negative, okay? Current numbers are negative, projections are negative, okay? That's reality. Irrespective of stock market hype in, in the news, hyping, of, of, which is usually short term, you'll see, um, that's the reality, okay? Vegas on the ground, DraftKings and online it tells the story if you want bellwethers. ASM, regulated or exempt market, will make money from the first day, day one. From the first day that we turn it on, it will make money. That's the difference between us and DraftKings and anybody like that. From the first day, all of the infrastructure, we built it on the back of Microsoft. It will scale up as high as it's needed. The only parts that will grow are going to be customer support people and surveillance like we had in Costa Rica. We'll have to have a police department and, you know, some data management stuff. But for the most part, it's a Coke machine. So uh, big buildings in metro areas in trouble. Yeah, so I already said that. Uh, the whole suburb, urban suburb thing is being, there's a lot of, there's going to be a lot of, um, for, of, of changes going on there because the case for, for, for commutes and the case for going into a cubicle and a skyscraper somewhere, it's rapidly disappearing. So commercial real estate, not looking good. Uh, some college sport, I saw a story uh, yesterday, um, college sports, some claims that college sports will not be financially viable without uh, fans in the stands. First story I've seen like that. I don't remember the teams that were particular mentioned, but I think it, it was pretty big media outlet that put this out. So I think it's really uh, something to say that without fans in the stands, that college there's some college uh, sports that are not going to survive. So again, insert ASM in the, in the sports markets. Um, Esports, not a present priority. We've taken a good look at it. Uh, there are issues. I have some issues with it in terms of, well, quite frankly, manipulation. I mean, you're not no longer dealing with physical people that you can see on a field. You're dealing with computer code, right with possible possibilities for manipulation and all that. Those things have not been worked out. This is not a present priority. I'm not saying we won't get back to it. Alper is in favor of it, on, you know, provided we develop it correctly. But it's not the present priority. The present priority is to deal with the COVID-19 team sports rescues. That's it. I mean, that's where we focus. Once we get that out, then we can talk about esports and what we want to do with that. But it's not going to happen. Uh, it's not going to happen in the near future. Um, one of the Hero Club members made a deal with Phil Collins Charity. I just want to mention that um, that was announced on the last uh, on the last call. Um, yeah, so this is just a side note. After handing uh, ASM off to to Alper, I'm going to be getting into the groups that are working on automating the legal industry and removing planet from the planet lawyers. I think that. For the most part, lawyers are predators and parasites. They're either out causing trouble or they're just sucking uh, productive capital out of the system and they don't produce anything. They don't produce anything. So uh, I think that you automate that, you put it in the cloud, 
and uh, and then you have uh, that productive capital can go to you know feeding hungry people and 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 creating jobs and doing useful stuff instead of instead of ticking on you know being a, a little tick on, on the system a tick and a, and a predator that's what you've got ticks and predators um, I've dealt with it long enough to know nobody will convince me otherwise I've seen enough of this TV show that's what it is so I'm gunning for that once Alfred takes over ASM I'm gonna go there because that clog that corruption in the system get loose of that and and everything's gonna work a lot better so uh, Mark Cuban a few things on Mark Cuban here um, he wants to go slowly on reopening sports and here's a guy that's wealthy and and well known and involved obviously with basketball uh, owning the Mavericks and he is of the mind that we want to do this slowly um, he says look at the testing protocols in the White House that's the best science on the on the in the world and they are still uh, you know I mean coronavirus is in the White House so if they can't get it right in there then he's like I'm not I'm not I'm not advocating that we move the NBA until that's worked out. So very slow, very slow uh, moving. And Cuban is a big mouthpiece in that space. So it's going to affect how the, how the other uh, teams and leagues look at it. And so uh, we made a dream list. You know, uh, I've actually asked for an in, a direct introduction to Cuban through, through Jeff Hazlett. I, I know that he's a, uh, uh, through, through Shark Tank, I've, I've met uh, Kevin O'Leary. I mean, I saw him speak. I was five, ten feet away from him uh, in, at, a, at a convention. Uh, the one that I spent more time with in multiple breakout sessions was Kevin Harrington. Uh, I know that um, Jeff has some connection there. So I've actually asked Jeff to, to give um, a direct contact to Cuban because I think we, we can talk to Cuban about, about ASM and, and specifically we want to talk about XFL saving XFL. I think now's the time. Um, I'm starting to pay more attention to his public uh, media appearances and his interviews. And I think it's it's time. If we can get a, a warm introduction, um, it's going to be helpful. So I'm going to start with uh, Jeff and, and ask for, uh, I've already asked, to be introduced to Mark Cuban. Um, incidentally, I, I the last time I asked for a name, it was the Zoom CEO to connect up with Ace, and he, he made that connection. So if he's got the connection, I'm sure he's going to help. Uh, if he doesn't, then we've got a couple other routes. Um, I'll I'll reach out to uh, Kevin Harrington and see if I can get get to Cuban through him, and then uh, some of our team members also have have connections to him. So we're gonna we're gonna come at it from a few different sides because he's talked about you know he, he's really starting to talk about what he calls America 2.0. I mean, that's speaking our language. He, you know, he talks about uh, you know new technologies, things that I've never even heard about. Things that we haven't even thought about are going to are, go, are going to be the next wave. Yeah, well, we couldn't agree more. So I think it's time. Um, and his name has come up a lot of times. I mean, even all the way back to Costa Rica uh, time. My my ex-wife actually brought brought his name up very early, like 2005, 2006. There was something on TV, and she said, you know, this is a guy that you probably want to get in contact with if you can. So uh, Mark Cuban, and then so the dream list. So I said, give me three names. You know, if you only got three names, uh, who would we want to have a few minutes to talk to to about ASM? The three names are Mark Cuban, which that introduction has already been asked for, and we're working it from a few different uh, angles. The other is Warren Buffett and Bill Gates. I don't know. I I don't. I won't pretend that I have any any um, ability to reach into the other two. I think that's probably a little premature. Maybe maybe not. Um, but but yeah, I agree. If we want, if there's three names, those are the three names. Uh, I'm going to try. I'm going to wait till I get an answer back on Cuban before I ask for, for any more because this is a favor. You know, it's really burning political capital. I don't want to, you know, abuse that. So maybe not immediately. Um, kind of feels like Buffett and Gates are are fro a little further along. Um, you know, Gates is the philanthropy side, and and Warren, of course, is is Mr. Finance, right? So Cuban is in sports and very actively involved and, and, all, and all of that and is in our space. So he's first. Um, yeah, America 2.0. So 50 million jobs. I also called this one. Uh, I'm on the record for this. 50 million jobs lost. That's where the number is, is, is now actually being said, if you go out and look in the news stories. Um, there is no... <laughs> 
half of those jobs are gone forever, okay, no matter what. So what is going to produce 25 million jobs? Sure, you can create uh, new, new deal type programs and, and just print money and put people to work, you know, digging holes and refilling holes. They used to say that it's better to have somebody dig a hole and fill it back in than sit at home and collect welfare. We need something new, okay? And uh, that something new is not going to be gambling. I want you to show me one case in the world where gambling built a civilization, okay? You have gambling cities and areas that are all glitzy in the center, and, and then you have pretty much poverty and wasteland if you ring out very far away from that city. It is not a mechanism to, for wealth creation and job creation beyond usually low-level, very um, transit-type jobs where they can be lost in a minute kind of thing. Uh, it, is, it produces low-level um, temporary and low skilled for the most part jobs and that's what it produces. It does not create, there's no wealth effect. There's no wealth effect from gambling. That doesn't happen. It's the contrary of that. So um, how are you going to do that? You need a new asset class. You need, you know, the securitization of sports performance and sports markets and all of that. That is an economic engine and it is a big enough engine to fill this gap. It is a big enough engine, and I'm going to prove that in the coming months through the Sports Vote Manifesto and a bunch of other things that are going to come out of that at, to show the actual economic case that I'm not just spouting this off, but that I can prove it. It, it, it has that potentiality to create millions, and tens of millions of jobs, seriously, tens of millions of jobs, not because they're all sports traders in the same way that the stock market doesn't create mil millions of jobs because everybody's a trader. It's because it, of the capital formation and all of the industry that grows, being able to form capital in a new way, put it into productive enterprise, and then the, the enterprise that comes out of that, you know, the, the peripheral things. You know, if you start building more sports leagues and sports stadiums, then you're going to have people that work in those stadiums. You have people that supply things to those stadiums. You're going to have more interest in sports broadly. So there's going to be a bigger appetite for gear and all kinds of specialization. Things like that are going to happen. New, new, new leagues are going to pop out of the ground that never existed before because they can access capital. That's how you create millions and millions of jobs, not by enabling online gambling. There is no case for that, none. And if you want to challenge me on it, show me the case. Show me the case where that has ever happened in the history of the world. It simply does not exist and cannot exist by the nature of it. So that's all. Um, thank you for your time, and I will report again on next Sunday. Bye now.